right so now I'm taking down the um, the 17 meter antenna because the um, the bands really dropped out now so I'm gonna use this NFED uh, antenna um, I've got a, an isolating bit there as well I'm gonna put that over the uh, top of the uh, top of the mast I'm gonna run this wire up and then back down again so it creates almost like a it's almost like a, a inverted V but with the NFED and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get on to 40 meters with that <coughs> this wire goes on and on and on until it gets to the end So with the end fed half wave, I've just been working on 40 meters for a little bit. Um, done some FT8. Um, got a bunch of contacts on FT8 actually. That was um, a nice little uh, bundle of contacts. Uh, nothing on voice yet anyway. Um, going to do a bit more on 40 and then uh, a little bit later I will be uh, switching over to an SDR radio and um, just going a bit lower, going trying to go down to a lot, uh, some of the VLF frequencies and see what we can hear down there. So, um, yeah, call that a break now and then um, be back in a bit. I've switched over onto the um, I'm using a Fun Cube dongle, the SDR dongle, and I'm using a Hammett Up uh, Up converter. It allows me to. Um, to try and listen really low in the frequencies below HF there's lots of um, there's lots of stuff happening in the frequencies way below the HF so I decided uh, well actually I was, this is one of my favorite books at the moment I don't know if you can see that it's a book called Radio Nature and it's a fascinating book that actually talks about not just man-made radio stuff but and natural radio events that happen um, but a lot of this stuff happens really low down in the frequency range down to a matter of a few kilohertz so or even lower so it's really got me interested in this idea okay when I when I get a chance to come back out here I wanted to um, actually just have a listen to you know really low down see how far I can get I'm just going to use the end fed half wave for the moment, well for tonight, because it's awful out there. But on other occasions I might try different antennas and see which ones I sort of can hear more with on the radio. So I'm um, just using the fun cube. I'm using the, the software's SDR console and uh, I'll put a link for all of this stuff below. Um, but this SDR console, fantastic bit of software. It's really good because it can record on SDR console I can record either audio, I can actually record the whole bandwidth um, that, that I'm, I'm listening to and have that a huge data stream for that um, for analysing later. Then you can also record to MP4 or record video from it as well. So I'm just going to just catch a few bits of video of some of the things that I'm hearing. So that's what I'm going to do now for uh, um, the next sort of hour or so and then uh, yeah see what we can pick up so what i'll do is i'll jump in and out of a recording that i'll get from sdr console and uh, yeah we'll, we'll see see what we can hear and see so the up converter the way that that works is uh, the frequencies that you want to listen to let's say you want to listen to just right down to one kilohertz <clears throat> this would give you 125 megahertz uplift so it'll be 125 points, you know, whatever. So it lifts it up by 125. So you have to dial in like 125. If I go over to here, go back down, uh, you have to dial in the one the 125 megahertz. Um, but really, you are just working with this lower range here.
I think radio is one of those hobbies that um, the mystery of how some of it works or, or what you're listening to or what you're hearing is part of the attraction as well so um, <clears throat> you get to understand a little, a little bit around the HF what's going on the different um, even man-made noises or natural noises you know different types of modes you, you, you get to be able to categorize and, and work out what what they are when you start going down into much lower frequencies it's a it's a real place of mystery and I think I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that initial first step into that so I've made a few recordings and some of them sound rhythmic but some of them sound like a continuous tone so some of this might be actually transmissions some of this might actually be the effects of uh, harmonics as well uh, maybe stuff in the room I don't know how much of because this setup I've got here with the N fed in in theory the um, the coax in here some of that wire is part of the antenna as well and um, so I'm maybe picking up some noises from inside the barn from from local noises some of it might be uh, from further away um, I picked up a few um, low frequency um, uh, radio stations uh, so yeah, there's plenty of um, radio stations there as well so you can get RTL SDRs um, quite cheap now uh, 20, odd, 20 odd pounds and I, I would say to anybody who's getting into radio and really sort of making those first steps to try and get one of those those USB um, SDR dongles. So by having a RTL SDR, you, you open up to a new world of radio, and I think anybody that um, is interested or is involved in the radio hobby, it's uh, well worth getting one. And you find in different ways you can actually then get to listen to. Um, so with the SDR dongles, then you can actually listen to a wide range of um, radio from uh, you know, very high um, UHF radio right down to um, ELF, you know, very low frequencies, especially with the up converter as well. So yeah, I'm going to just do a little bit more of this here. If I find any more signals, I'll record them. And then if I find out when I get back home what they are, I'll, I'll add a bit more to the video or put a comment in below. If you know what they are and just put a comment in so together we can just work out what some of these recordings are hopefully so uh, thanks for watching bye for now